machine. Okay, good. Right. Okay. So, good morning, everyone. It's great to uh, see you this morning, although I can't see you physically, but uh, I trust that uh, you are all joining us in your homes uh, to join this uh, Palm, Palm Sunday communion service. So, a very warm welcome to everyone uh, this morning. We had a bit of a difficulty in connecting to the uh, uh, live stream this morning, so, uh, but uh, uh, it's, it's great that we can finally uh, start. Okay, now I have contacted several people in the past week, uh, those who have been to our church before, uh, or those who used to come to our church, uh, are saying that uh, you know, everything is now online, and I, uh, I welcome them to come and join us this morning uh, through online. So if you are joining uh, us this morning, uh, a very special thanks and welcome to you. Uh, let's pray that the Lord will really bless each and every one of us uh, as we join together uh, through online. And uh, I'm joined by my family. Uh, so Anna is there, Isaac and, and Nathan, they're all helping me with the uh, sound and picture. Uh, and they will also uh, sing along with me here in the worship room. So uh, now today, as you know, is the Palm Sunday, the start of Holy Week. And this is the most important uh, week in Christian calendar. Uh, because this is uh, when we think about Jesus a final week on earth, his ministry, his life, and culminating on Good Friday and Easter Sunday. So it's a very special, very important uh, week, the Holy Week, or sometimes it's called the Passion uh, Week. So it's really the beginning of this uh, Holy Week. So we have a communion uh, service uh, this morning. So before we go any further, let's pray. Let me commit this service to the Lord, and uh, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace, we thank you for your love, we thank you for bringing us together through online uh, on this very special Palm Sunday at the start of Holy Week. And Lord, we worship you, we praise you, and we invite the Holy Spirit to come and touch us. Lord, we pray that you would come and visit every home every uh, living room, every dining room, uh, or even bedroom, uh, wherever they are worshiping you this morning and join together. I pray, Lord, that you would come and visit them. And I pray that you would cover us with the precious blood of Jesus, especially as we join communion, remembering the bread and wine, remembering uh, the broken body and shed blood of Christ. So God, would you bless each and every one of us. Would you speak to us and would you fill us with the power of the Holy Spirit. Far and wide, wherever they are, Lord, I pray that you would bless this service. So we commit this service to your hands and I pray all these things in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. 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 Okay, so we're going to start our first uh, song and that is Praise is Rising. Uh, we tried to uh, play, Anna was trying to play the piano, but uh, somehow we couldn't quite uh, uh, work out the, uh, the tune. So we're going to sing without music uh, this morning. The first song is Praise is Rising, well-known song. If you like to stand, uh, as we normally do in, in church, let's all stand together and uh, let's sing this song. Praise is rising, eyes are torn. to you hope is stirring hearts are yearning for you we long for you when we see you we find strength to face the day in your presence all our fears are washed away washed away Hosanna, Hosanna, you are the God who saves us, worthy of all our praises. Hosanna, Hosanna, come have your way among us, we welcome you here, Lord Jesus. to 
Once again, it talks about in the second verse, his body, the bread, his blood, the wine. So very appropriate uh, to sing uh, on a communion uh, someday. So let's sing uh, this song. He became sin, who knew no sin, that we might become his righteousness. He humbled himself and carried a cross. Love so amazing, love so amazing, Jesus Messiah, name of all names, bless the Redeemer, Emmanuel, the rescue for sinners. The ransom from heaven, Jesus Messiah, Lord of all. His body, the bread, His blood, the wine, broken and poured out all for love. The whole world trembled and the veil was torn. Love so amazing, love so amazing, Jesus Messiah, name of all names, bless the Redeemer, Emmanuel, the rescue for sin. Some 
from heaven, Jesus Messiah, Lord of all. Let's sing that once again, the first verse. He became sin, who knew no sin, that we might become His righteousness. He humbled Himself and carried the cross. Love so amazing, love so amazing, Jesus Messiah. Messiah, Lord of all, His body the bread, His blood the wine, broken and poured up all for love. The whole world trembled and the veil was torn. Love so amazing, love so Messiah, name above all names, bless the Redeemer, Emmanuel, the rescue for sinners, the ransom from heaven, Jesus Messiah, Lord. Jesus Messiah, name of all names, bless the Redeemer, Emmanuel, the rescue for sinners, the ransom from heaven, Jesus Messiah. Fantastic, really enjoyed singing that song. Wonderful. Okay, so we're going to affirm our faith together by declaring the Apostles' Creed. This is the ancient uh, statement of faith Christians down the, country, down the centuries. They declare, they proclaim uh, this statement. So let's loud and clear, let's all read or recite the Apostles' Creed uh, together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty the Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He descended to the dead. The third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. And thence He will come to church the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, 
the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Okay, please take your seats. Let's uh, move on to read our scripture this morning. And by the way, I said to uh, 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 some of you uh, that the, uh, I'm going to uh, live stream the service from home today. I did try it. I, I, I took some of the stuff to, to our home, but somehow the live stream connection didn't work out in my home. So we, we are back in church and it's great to be here. It's wonderful to be here. Uh, so let's read our scripture uh, this morning. Luke chapter 19 verses 28 to 36 and then skipping a few verses and go to verse 41 through to 46. So two uh, parts of the same chapter. Luke's Gospel chapter 19 verses 28 to 36 and then 41 to 46. This is the story of Jesus entering Jerusalem on the first Palm Sunday. Okay, so if you have your Bible uh, or maybe you can read it from the screen, let's read scripture loud and clear uh, together. After Jesus had said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem as he approached Bethany and Bethany at the hill called the Mount of Olives. He sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, Why are you untying it? Tell him, The Lord needs it. Those who were sent ahead went and found uh, just as he had told them. As they were untying the cord, its owners asked them, Why are you untying the cord? They replied, The Lord needs it. They brought it to Jesus, threw their cloaks on the cord, and put Jesus on it. As he went along, people spread their cloaks on the road. And going to verse 41, As he approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he wept over it and said, If you, even you, had only known on this day what would bring you peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes. The days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment against you and encircle you and hang you in on every side. They will dash you to the ground, you and the children within your words. They will not leave one stone on another because you did not recognize the time of God's coming to you. Then he entered the temple area and began driving out those who were selling. It is written, he said to them, My house will be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of robbers. Amen. Okay, good. Right, so this morning, uh, the title of my talk is... The king is coming. The king is uh, coming. Now, one of the characteristics of times like today, times like these days, is that there are many unverified rumors. Uh, you know, the Bible talks about in the end times there will be rumors, rumors of wars. So it has always been the case it, down the history uh, when, when, you know, when, when, when a time like this, when a country or when the whole world is in turmoil, there are many rumors and a lot of them, you know, fake news that we, we talk about now and uh, unverified uh, rumors. And one of those is actually uh, this. I'm, I'm, I'm sure maybe some of you have uh, seen this, you know, this, this thing going around. Uh, through through uh, you know SMS and messengers and WhatsApp, so I I have seen this in, in, in various places, and this is about Bill Gates, and uh, the story is Bill Gates' views on the coronavirus, and it says what is the coronavirus COVID nineteen really uh, teaching us? I'm sure you know you have you have seen it uh, somewhere. So when I read it, and a lot of people actually find it quite you know very good, very encouraging, inspiring. Uh, because it talks about, uh, it is reminding us that we are all equal because the virus doesn't uh, discriminate regardless of culture, religion, occupation, financial status, how famous you are, doesn't matter. Doesn't really discriminate. You know, even the Prime Minister, even the, uh, the, the Prince of Wales, you know, we can all uh, get infected by this 
virus. And also it is reminding us that we are all connected and, and uh, something that affects one person has an uh, effect on another. So we are all connected. Uh, and also it is reminding us how precious our health is, how precious our family, our home life uh, is. And also it says it is reminding us of the uh, shortness of life, how short, how fragile our life uh, is and how materialistic our society has become, uh, you know, as we find it difficult to show uh, these days. So when, we, when you read this, this you know, uh, supposedly from Bill Gates, uh, uh, lessons from coronavirus, you know, it's really, uh, it's really edifying, it's really encouraging and even inspiring. But the trouble is, it has nothing to do with Bill Gates. And that's the point. Uh, there was a news a few days ago on the BBC, and it was even passed on to BBC. Okay, and they thought this is this is you know genuine uh, from the Bill Gates, and uh, people want to hear what you know what he has to say. But they discovered it has nothing to do with Bill Gates, and they just don't know who has written uh, this piece of uh, piece of article. Okay, so there are many many rumors going around, and some of them fake news. Some of them cannot be really verified, you know, video, video uh, clips and, you know, uh, writings and, and news and stuff like that. So, in a time like this, we need to be really careful. Uh, we don't want to just pass around unverified news, you know, you, even, even about coronavirus, even about the infection and, and death of people, uh, you know, that there are some news which are not really uh, true. So, it is important that we focus on the truth of the Bible, especially so during these days, during this time. Uh, Matthew chapter 5 verse 18 says this, I tell you the truth, until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter nor the least stroke of a pen will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. So the Bible is the only news that is absolutely accurate and truthful. Even the smallest letter, even the least stroke of a pen will not disappear, the Bible says, until everything that's said, everything that is written is accomplished. So it's really time that we focus on the truth of the Bible. That's why I've been sending first news. You know, this, this, this last week and the people commented that they really enjoy, you know, getting this first news from the Bible and reading and meditating on it, you know, doing quiet time. And, and so rather than just, just accepting all this pouring, over, uh, you know, flowing uh, news into our mind. So it is great that we think about the Bible's story uh, this morning. So the title I said is The King is Coming, Hosanna. The king is coming. I don't know whether you can see the picture of Jerusalem in, 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 the, uh, in the background there. Okay, so Jesus, Jesus uh, riding on a donkey, uh, colt, and he's entering uh, Jerusalem. So this is, a, you know, in my Bible, uh, I've got a little heading in this section. It says, Jesus comes to Jerusalem as king. And that is the same heading, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John's Gospel. And sometimes it is called Jesus' triumphal entry. Okay, so that's really the theme of this passage. Christians everywhere around the world, down the history, we believe that Jesus is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. But what does that mean? When you say Jesus is King and He is the King is coming, and He is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, what do we mean by that? Uh, what do you mean that Jesus is the king? He comes as king. Now, let me just remind you about the name Jesus Christ. Now, Jesus, the name Jesus is his human name. In fact, the name Jesus in those days was a quite, a, quite a common name. So many people, uh, not only Jesus of Nazareth, but many people had that name, Jesus. And in Hebrew, it is Joshua. So in Old Testament, Hebrew, Joshua, in New Testament, uh, Jesus, the same name. Okay, it means uh, he saves people. He's a savior. And then the name Christ is actually a title. It's not a surname. Jesus is first name and Christ is surname, family name. It's not like that. Christ is actually a title. It means the anointed one. And in Hebrew, it is Messiah. 
So Christ is the Messiah, the anointed one. In other words, Christ means king. Because in the Old Testament times, only three uh, titles, three offices, they were anointed. The priest, uh, the prophets, and the kings. So when we say Jesus Christ, it means Jesus the Messiah, as we just sang earlier. And it also means Jesus the King. King Jesus. That's what Jesus Christ means. So on Palm Sunday, today, Remember the King Jesus entering Jerusalem, entering into people's life, bringing His kingdom, because it's going to be a different kind of kingdom, bringing His kingdom into our lives. So I want to really think about three things, three points uh, from this passage uh, this morning. And uh, the first thing is this. King Jesus wants to go on a court. Or donkey okay and uh, so you can see in the picture there that Jesus as he arrived uh, around Jerusalem uh, Bethany Bethany he sent his uh, two of his disciples and his, he told them you know if you go to a village you know this certain village you will find a colt a donkey tied there so you go and untie it and bring it here and I'm sure at that point the disciples were a bit wondering a bit you know curious what uh, do, do you want us to go to this village and, and just, uh, just uh, untie a colt and, and bring it to you? Well, you know, you know we don't know who, who, who owns that colt. It's not our colt. Uh, it's, not, it's not your colt, uh, Lord. So how, how can you just go turn up and, and untie and bring it? But Jesus was adamant. He was very clear. And, and he said, you know, sensing, sensing what disciples were thinking, he said, well, if anyone asks you, tell them, the Lord needs it. That was it. So with that in mind, the disciples, they went this village. And, 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 and behold, you know, as they were, as they were untying the cord, the owners came, you know, and then they, they, they challenged them. Hey, 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 what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? You are, you, you know, what do you think you are doing now? Why are you untying our, our cord? And, uh, and they said, as Jesus told them, well, the Lord needs it. And so, uh, although Luke's gospel doesn't, doesn't, doesn't say, uh, the Mark's gospel says, and they allowed, they allowed, they let the cult go with them. Okay. So that's how Jesus, uh, you know, started riding on a donkey in this journey. Now, I find that really interesting. I, I think there are two aspects to it. The first aspect to this, to this part of the story is this. Jesus is actually the ultimate owner, not only of this donkey, uh, but of everything. That's why he was able to demand, sending the disciples and say, bring a donkey, untie the cord and bring it here. Okay, so I can, I can ride on it. So it's not that Jesus is trying to steal something, you know, he's becoming a, like a thief, uh, you know, and, and just, just trying to take, take away a, a cord. He actually is, because He is the Creator. He is the Alpha and Omega. Even before the world began, uh, Jesus was there, you know. Uh, so He is the Creator. He is the ultimate owner of everything. He owns everything you have. He owns everything that is in your house. He, everything, he owns everything in our lives and our very own lives belong to Him. So He is the ultimate owner. And that means He's, a, he's in absolute charge. He is in absolute control. Now that is very important to remember in a time like this. Because when, we, when you listen, when you watch news, it seems like uh, things are completely out of control. In Britain, in the United Kingdom, you know, look, you know, watch the news yesterday, the day before, you know, last, last week, as we are in a near lockdown. When we watch the news, your, your, your fear level is rising. Didn't you? You know, your fear, fear level is rising. As we hear this, this news about this virus spreading, you know, Spain, Italy, in Europe, and in Britain. So it, it feels like things are out of control and are completely out of control. 
but it is important to remember when God is in control. He is in charge. And only when we know that we don't, we don't, we don't panic. You know, we can, we can still trust God. We can still uh, believe that God is working for the good. He is in charge. Okay? So that's very important. As Jesus demanded his call, he demonstrated his power, his authority over everything, including that donkey. And, uh, and then there is another aspect. So, you know, on the one side, on the one hand, you have this mighty power and authority over, of, of Jesus over everything. His transcendent might and power. But then at the same time, on the other side of the coin, we can also see Jesus' humility, his humble heart. Because as, you know, by acquiring this donkey and riding on this donkey, he's actually fulfilling a prophecy. Prophecy that was spoken by uh, Zechariah. And uh, uh, oh, we're, going to, we're going to do that uh, later. But Zechariah uh, 9, chapter 9, verse 9, it says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, righteous and having salvation, gentle and riding uh, riding on a donkey, or on a colt, the foal of a donkey. In Matthew's Gospel, it actually says he is humble, riding on a donkey. Now, you know, just pictures here, you know. This is the picture. This is a, this is a Caesar, the Roman Emperor Caesar. And this is what they like to do. The kings, the emperors, the monarchs. This is what they like to display. This is what they like the world to see. On a stallion, white stallion, and the carriage, golden carriage, and going through this, 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 you know, this, this, this arc, okay, in procession, and people lining up, and they just cheering the king, the emperor, and this is what many kings and emperors, uh, you know, like like to do, okay. Well, this is a this is a close to home. This is Charles the first uh, of England. You know, uh, I think Charles the first was, you know, uh, you know, like a short man, okay. But this is a this is a painting uh, by a a Anthony Van Dyck in National Gallery, and uh, and you know he is, you know, he is on this horse. The horse looks a bit funny. It's a very fat horse, by the way, okay. But you know, Charles the first is is really imposing, and uh, you know, look at this posture, you know. So demonstrating his authority as a king on this big, huge, uh, you know, brown horse. Okay, so this is what the English kings uh, want to display, okay, and uh, you know, maybe close to our time, this is, uh, this is Putin, the Russian president, okay, Vladimir Putin, and uh, that was on the news, I think, a few years ago, uh, so, you know, perhaps he liked to see himself as a, you know, modern-day Russian king, Charles, they say in Russian, uh, so, you know, he likes to pose, uh, you know, picture uh, like this on a, on, a, on, a, on a horse and, you know, talk, you know take off. Uh, and, and just, just you know, imposing, okay, as the ruler, modern day ruler, you know, almost like a modern day king on a horse. So whether it was ancient time and, and today, you know, those in power, those in authority, those kings, the rulers, the emperors, the monarchs, they want to demonstrate, they want to really show off riding on a donkey, uh, riding on a horse, sorry. No one wants to ride on a donkey. But that's what Jesus did. Very humble, very gentle. You know, there is no grandeur uh, about this little cold, little donkey. You know, this poor donkey, you know? And, uh, but Jesus is riding on that donkey and that's how he entered uh, Jerusalem. And, and also, in this story, today's passage, uh, it actually demonstrates Jesus' Jesus's humility. Okay, because although Matthew's gospel doesn't record it, but Mark's gospel says this, Mark chapter 11, verse 3. If anyone asks you, why are you doing this? Tell him the Lord needs it and will send it back here shortly. We'll send it back here shortly. So Jesus said, okay, yeah, I, I, need, I need that donkey, so bring it here, bring it here so that I can ride. Okay, but Jesus promised, I will send it back here shortly. And, uh, you know, as, as we said, he is the ultimate owner, so he can possess this donkey. You know, once, once, once took it, he can keep it. He can, he can possess it. But he doesn't do that because he's a humble, 
his, his gentle. And so he only wanted to borrow the donkey for a while. So that's why we don't see Jesus on a donkey anymore, you know, for the rest of the week. It's only, only this, this, you know, this, this point, okay? And uh, shortly afterwards, the donkey was returned. Again, showing Jesus' humility and Jesus' humble heart. Uh, so he has this wonderful two sides. On the one side, this transcendent might, power, authority. He's the king. He's the ultimate order. He, he possesses everything and he's in charge. He's in control. But on the other hand, he's gentle. He's, uh, he's meek. Uh, he's a humble. Okay? And that's why, you know, unless we welcome Jesus into our lives, he will never just force his way into our lives. And even today, as we worship him, uh, as we worship Him in our homes, unless you invite Jesus into your heart, into your family, into your home, He wouldn't. He will never just force His way into your home. And that's why it is important that we invite Him, we invite Jesus into our midst. Revelation chapter 3, verse 20, it says, Here I am, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him and he with me. If anyone opens the door, if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, then I will come in and eat with him, meaning fellowship with him. So brothers and sisters and children, it is important that every time and every morning, every morning as we wake up, as we get up, as we you know, get out of our bed, we welcome Jesus because we don't want to go on our day without Jesus, you know, doing our own things. We want to involve Jesus from the start and until the end of each day. It is the same with the Holy Spirit. You know, Holy Spirit, again, gentle and humble. We need to invite the Holy Spirit to fill us, to touch us. And especially you need to do that, you know, because, you know, you, you, you may well experience, you know, uh, from day to day, you know, this this. A fear level arising, you know, when you hear something, when you hear a news, okay, or, or maybe when you know when, when you when you have a loved one uh, in your family, uh, you're not well, unwell, sick, so you can have this fear, this panic, okay, and so we need to invite the Holy Spirit uh, to really rule in our hearts, rule in our family. The devil, on the other hand, always just just force you know its way into us. Okay, so we don't want it, we didn't welcome it, we didn't you know, invite him, but the devil will just, you know, just, just come and control. And that's why we sometimes see people who are possessed by the devil. They never invite him, but they just, welcome back. <laughs> that was a bit of a technical issues and uh, unplanned toilet break, but welcome back. Thank you for bearing uh, with us. Uh, Andrew and Linus were really trying to work out uh, what the what the causes were, but let's sing this song. You know, uh, before we before we uh, uh, continue in my talk, let's sing this song. Uh, God is good. God is so good. God is so good. God. Jesus is humble and he shows this humility 
And so we need to welcome Jesus into our life. And Holy Spirit the same. We need to invite the Holy Spirit to lead us, to guide us, to speak to us, and to fill us. The devil, on the other hand, uh, you know, he will just he will just come. And that's why the Bible talks about uh, you know, uh, demon possessed, uh, demon possessed uh, people. So if we haven't received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, today is a fantastic time to invite Jesus by a simple prayer. And uh, uh, you know, you can pray, Lord, I'm a sinner, and thank you that you died uh, on the cross for my sins. So you can say sorry, and you can say thank you for dying on the cross for me. And please, please come into my life. And be my Lord and Savior. Lead me and guide me. And make me the kind of person you designed me to be. So by, by a simple prayer, you can invite Jesus into your lives. And the fact that Jesus is riding on a donkey also tells us that he wants to carry our burdens. And that's what donkeys do. You know, horses, uh, you know, they, 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 they are used in the horse racing. Okay. Uh, but donkeys... They always carry heavy stuff, uh, you know, luggages and heavy stuff on their back. So Jesus really symbolizes that he wants to carry our burdens, our weight. And so Hebrews 12, uh, 1 says, Let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. It is the sin that burdens us. It is the sin that weighs us down. Okay? But Jesus comes. And, uh, and he, he carries our sins. He carries our burden. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest, he said. So as we worship this morning, as we share the communion this morning, let's, let's, you know, let's put our burdens onto him. Whatever anxiety, whatever, whatever, whatever worries and concerns you may have, let's, let's put them on Jesus. He wants to carry uh, our burdens and our, our sins. And, and that's what many people are experiencing, uh, you know, these days. You know, as, as many people are lo locked down, uh, in, in lockdown, and, and just, you know, confined in their homes. And many, many people are turning to uh, services like this. They want, to, they want to find hope. They want to f uh, find a sense of assurance. Uh, so they, they're tuning in. They listen. They join. They watch online services and uh, you know I, 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 I read this story by Terry Vogel uh, a, a, a well-known uh, uh, you know the, the church planter and, 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 and pastor he said you know so many people suddenly matters of life and death possible financial disaster and loss uh, you know loss of job uh, and, and, and so attention is being arrested he said and people are just watching and enjoying online services so it's a fantastic opportunity uh, to do that. So that's the first thing that we can uh, see about this story. And the second point is that King Jesus weeps over the city. Verse 41, as he approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he wept over it. So it's interesting, isn't it? Because the, the mood suddenly changes. As he was riding on a donkey, people were putting their cloaks on the donkey, on the road, and there were you know, palm branches, you know, men and women and children, they were sh uh, uh, just waving palm branches and welcome, Hosanna! Hosanna to the Son of David! They, you know, they, were, they were really you know, you know, loud and noise and in, in the streets of Jerusalem. But all of a sudden, as Jesus came near to the city, he just whips over the city. And the reason why is in the next verse 42, if you, even you, had only known on this day what would bring you peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes. You know, the name Jerusalem really means city of Shalom, Jerusalem, Shalom, meaning peace. Okay, so supposedly this place, you know, is supposed to be a place of peace. And then look what they are, what they are, you know, what they are singing and what they are, uh, what they are saying. He says, the whole crowd, they joyfully gathering together and they say, blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. So even though they are in a place called a, a city of peace, Shalom, and they are singing, they are talking about peace, you know, in, in, their, in their mouth. But they are not really experiencing real peace. Peace. It is hidden from you, Jesus said. And also Jesus wants, 
you know, this city, this Jerusalem is going to be destroyed. Uh, you know, there's, it says the enemies will come and they will build this embankment and they will hem in on every side. Uh, so that's exactly what happened in history. AD 70, uh, by the Roman general called Titus, he, he came with this army and he destroyed Jerusalem completely. Okay, and so even, even today, if you go to Rome, you know, there is, a, there is a, this, uh, this, this arch, uh, this arc of Titus, and on it, you can see, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, the picture there, okay? The, the Roman soldiers, they, they're carrying the menorah, you know, the, candle, the candlestick, and all those precious stuff from the temple of Jerusalem. Not one stone will be on another, he said, completely flattened, completely destroyed. So-called city of Shalom, city of peace, will be completely destroyed. Brothers and sisters, you will not find peace in a place. If you buy a new house, well, fantastic, for a couple of months, you will be really happy. But that house, that new house, doesn't provide you ultimate peace. You get a new job, you get a promotion, well, you'll be so happy, so excited for a couple of months. But after that, when you get used to everything, you know, uh, you don't have that ultimate peace. It is only we, we find peace in Jesus, in the person of Jesus Christ. Now this is, a, this is nice. This is written by C.S. Lewis uh, in 1942. And it says, Satan says, I will cause anxiety, fear, panic. I will shut down business, schools, places for worship, and sports events. I will cause economic turmoil. Now listen to what Jesus said. Jesus, I will bring together neighbors, Restore family unit. I will bring dinner back to the kitchen table. I will help people slow down their lives. Appreciate what really matters. I will teach my children to rely on me and not the world. I will teach my children to trust me and not their money and material resources. So Jesus brings real peace into our lives. And so today... Today, on this Palm Sunday, as the King is coming, uh, we need to invite Jesus, the Prince of Peace, into our life. The, the panic should go. The panic should go, you know, in Jesus' name. But then the peace, the peace, let the peace come and rule our hearts, reign over us. And then finally, Jesus wipes the temple courts. Uh, verse 45. Then he entered the temple area and began driving out those who were selling the money changers, you know, selling the doves and all these animals, sacri you know, sacrificial animals. He just, he just drove them away. This is actually what happened on the following day, not on the same day, but in Luke's gospel, you know, it seems like, uh, you know, just it's continuing, which is good, okay? Because this is one of the things that Jesus wanted to do. He wipes the temple uh, courts. Because in the temple area, they had very sophisticated systems. You know, they were very busy. A lot of uh, ritual ceremonies and sacrificing animals every day. But their hearts, the people's hearts, were far from genuinely worshipping God. There were many formalities. There were many ceremonies. There were many activities. You know, many animals sacrificed. But their hearts were far from worshipping God and loving Jesus. So this is the picture, yeah, just overturning the tables, okay? Now, I, I think this is uh, what God is doing among us and uh, uh, in us, okay? This is what I thought, you know, I was praying one day and I just, you know, thought came to my mind, what is God doing? What, what is God doing in us, in me, among us? Well, God is doing, God is purifying us, just like Jesus purified the temple. He wants to purify our hearts and removing all those, you know, uncleanness, all those drugs, refining us, purifying us. Let this time be a purifying period by the blood of Jesus, by the Holy Spirit. He is clarifying because sometimes we are a bit confused. You know, we have a call, we have a vision from God, uh, but then sometimes we are confused and, and, and you know, we, 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 are, we are lost. And so we, we you know, we, 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 we don't make right priority. Okay, we get busy. We just hooked up in the in the business of the world. Okay, but it is a time like this that things can be clarified. First thing first, what is the most important? Where are we heading? What's the ultimate goal? What is my life purpose? The important questions we can clarify. 
and also it is uniform. This is a wonderful feature of this. Okay, although we are separated from one another, we can't see physically. Okay, but we are closer. We are united more than ever. And this is something as a pastor, you know, I I do believe this. Okay, as a nation, as a country, people are coming together, and as a church and family, we are coming together in a time like this. It is definitely unifying and simplifying. Okay, look today. There's no music, you know, nothing, okay? And just a couple of songs. So just simplifying everything. And then, you know, service is just about an hour or so. Simplifying, simplifying. Just stripping of all those, sorry, all those draws, all those draws, and simplifying uh, things. And finally, beautifying. As His bride, as Jesus' is bride, He is beautifying us, okay? So PC, USB. You know this? USB? Okay. PC, USB, purifying, clarifying, unifying, simplifying, and beautifying. I believe that God is doing this in you and in me, in us and among us. So that's the, uh, uh, that's the, uh, uh, that's what God is saying. And just final point. And uh, Jesus said, he said to them, my house will be called a house of prayer and uh, you have made it a den of robbers. Church is a house of prayer. Prayer, okay, and that is exactly what we are going to do uh, this coming week. And uh, you know, I, I was going to play this video, but this is a this is about uh, this is surgeon, okay, nose and throat surgeon, and uh, he was asking for prayer uh, because we are heading Easter weekend, and he, she says uh, this is going to be really you know really uh, really difficult uh, week and and weekend coming. Okay, so we really need to pray for. Uh, the, the NHS staff and you know doctors and nurses and you know the leaders, national leaders. Okay, so it's really time to pray. Hi everybody, um, I'm Audrey. I'm an ear, nose, and throat surgeon at a hospital near you. you see? I'm here to encourage you to pray, 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 pray. We need you. Your country needs you to pray. Your uh, hospital needs you to pray. Your NHS needs you to pray. Um, we um, are heading towards the most difficult weekend Easter bank holiday and everywhere around the country hospitals are preparing um, for what could be an onslaught of this virus. Um, we need to stand. Pray that we would be well, that we'd be able to come to work. Um, pray that we would um, continue to stay fearless. Fear is a crippler. Um, but we need to stay fearless to fight this. Um, pray for resources, that we would have equipment, that we would have the personal protective equipment, particularly, that we need to keep things going. Pray for the supply chains, that stuff will just keep coming through. Um, pray for the guys at the top who have to make really difficult decisions. Um, and pray for the little guys at the bottom. Um, our cleaners, um, our clinical support workers, um, catering staff everybody who's doing their absolute best to keep things running. Um, pray for doctors and nurses, you know, um, we need you. We really, really need your prayers. This battle will not be won um, in the hospital. It'll be won on the knees of saints who are looking up to the one in whom all things consist, to the one who can do all things, and it can certainly be COVID-19. Um, his purposes will be worked out through this, absolutely. Um, but we need you to pray. Pray for, for Christians um, in the NHS. There are a number of us who God has strategically placed in different spots just so that we could um, stand and, and keep the light burning and, 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 and shine that light that, that says Jesus is Lord. Um, think of faith who's in the emergency department, who, when I saw her the other day, was um, putting on her PPE, just about to see a COVID patient, and she smiled at me and she said, he that is in me is greater than all this. And I was so encouraged. Think of faith. Think of, of um, Karis, who is a consultant general surgeon, who is um, heading up a new ethics committee designed to make decisions about what we're going to do when we have to choose between who gets a ventilator and who doesn't. Um, God has put a Christian in charge of that committee. Yes. Pray for her. She needs your prayers. Pray for me. Um, that I don't go crazy. Um, that um, I keep encouraging people. Um, that I stay well um, so that I can hug you um, one day uh, and not cough on you. Um, I'm going crazy. I'm going to stop this video.
Okay, so I don't know whether the sound was loud enough for you to uh, listen. I'm going to. I saw this one on the uh, certain zone uh, chat room, uh, and I saw this one uh, in the, the local passes uh, group. Uh, but I can put this on on every chat room, so maybe you can you can watch it uh, again. Very encouraging. So we are heading a, a you know very crucial weekend a very crucial week as a, as a nation. So it's time to pray. Uh, so the king is coming. The king wants to go on a court, you know, his power. The king whips over the city, his peace, and the king wipes the temple court. So we praise God. We worship God. And uh, so that is the, uh, the points of the message this morning. And now we turn to communion at home. Okay, so I have asked you to prepare your own communion because we cannot join uh, together. So hopefully, uh, if you have prepared your bread uh, and grape juice, your wine, or if, we, if, if you haven't prepared, that's, that's fine. You can just watch and, uh, and join us and, and quietly uh, and, and pray along. But if you have, uh, let's uh, join our communion. Let me read a passage from John's Gospel, chapter 6. Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink His blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise them up at the last day. For my flesh is real food and my blood is real drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so the one who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Your ancestors ate manna and died, but whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. Amen. Heavenly Father, I just pray as we join communion through online in our own homes, I pray, Lord, uh, that you would really uh, come and minister to every, every person, every man, every woman, every child. Uh, Lord, as we remember your broken body and your shed blood, and bring your healing, uh, bring your protection. And cover, cover us with the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so uh, uh, I'm going to uh, do communion for my children here. Uh, and now you can uh, do it for yourselves, your family. Okay, so children, would you like to come? This is the body of Christ which is broken for you. Nathan, this is the body of Christ which is broken for you. Okay, maybe you can turn around and so we can we can see together. Alright. So brothers and sisters. Let us eat this bread with faith and thanksgiving. Amen. And we're going to move on to the wine. So Anna, this is blood of Jesus which is shed for you. Isaac, this is blood of Jesus, which is shed for you. Nathan, this is blood of Jesus, which is shed for you. Okay, 
so once again, shall we turn around and uh, join by our brothers and sisters online. So brothers and sisters, let us drink this cup with faith and thanksgiving. said earlier, let's pray for the NHS uh, staff uh, in this crucial uh, week. Let's pray for our leaders, the Prime Minister, the Chancellor, the government ministers, scientific medical advisors. Let's pray for our church families, especially for those uh, who have not been well. Uh, there were few people uh, who have not been well. Uh, let's pray for them. Remember them. And let's pray for God's protection and the power of the blood of Jesus and healing power. And if you are feeling, watching this and feeling a bit unwell, let's invite Jehovah Rapha, the healing, God of healing, uh, you know, to bring healing, strength and power into our lives and into our family. And uh, let's also pray that we can, you know, we can be unified, purified, simplified, clarified and beautified uh, during this time. So let's, let's all pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning. We, uh, we pray uh, in your name, in the name of Jesus. We remember uh, the medical staff, the doctors and nurses and all those staff, all those workers at the hospitals and care homes and, and, and key uh, places up and down the country, especially as we are heading this crucial uh, weekend and crucial week. Lord, they are, they are stretched and they are, they, are, uh, they are stressed and they are burdened. So God, we remember them. We pray that you would cover them with the blood of Jesus. We pray for our national leaders, the Prime Minister, Chancellor, Cabinet Ministers, and uh, uh, the medical scientific advisors, as they make important decisions day by day. Uh, give them wisdom, give them discernment, give them perceptiveness so they can write uh, decisions at the right time. Lord, pray for our church families, wherever they are. Uh, pray, Lord, that you strengthen them, especially those who are struggling, those who are sick, those who had uh, uh, some symptoms in the last uh, uh, days or so. Lord, we pray that you will cover them with the blood of Jesus. Bring your power, bring your healing, bring your strength. Renew them, Lord, physically, spiritually, emotionally, mentally, in every way. So that, Lord, you can, we can experience uh, your restoring and healing power throughout this week. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for listening to our prayer and answering our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay, so we are nearly done. Uh, and, uh, you know, because of the uh, break in the, in, in, in the middle, but uh, we, we nearly done. So we're going to sing our final song. Let's stand together once again and sing this song. How great is our God. Uh, another favorite song of ours. We, we, sing, we sang this song many, many times. But let's sing this song together. The splendor of a king clothed in majesty let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness rises through high, and trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. How great is our God! Sing with me, our Beginning and the end. 
situation is very important and uh, we need to pray uh, so we're going to spend about half an hour or so you know it's not going to be long so don't worry if you have to work from home so don't worry it's going to be 7 30 in the morning okay monday to friday so just about half an hour or so you know uh, and so we're going to pray together okay so please do join and this is going to through zoom okay through uh, zoom so uh, i'm going to uh, send you a link once again but uh, please join the prayer uh, morning prayer and the Good Friday service will be 5 p.m. So Richard Harvey is going to send a recorded uh, version of the message, which is good. So Good Friday service 5 p.m. Easter Sunday service 9 a.m. And then on Thursday we have prayer meeting. We had a great prayer meeting last week, uh, 7:30 on Thursdays. I will I will keep sending first news. Okay, so please do uh, do your quiet time. Spend some time in the morning. The first thing in the morning, the first news. Okay, and then the John meeting, Sutton John, Tuesday 7.30, Kingston John, Wednesday 7.30, and Mutton John, Wednesday 7. Please do join. Can I just encourage you? You know, it's a time to be connected. Okay, so please do join and, and, uh, uh, and, and share together, pray together, worship together, uh, so we can support one another, encourage one another. That's really important. Okay, so early morning prayer, uh, join us this week. Okay. So, an offering, the online offering uh, at the end of service again. Uh, now, the account name is the, the, you know, the, the same account for the whole church, okay? Uh, sometimes it is London Fulgasper Central Church. That's our old, old name, uh, old name of the church, okay? So, sometimes you come across that, and so that's fine. And the account number and sort code is there. So, after the service, please give your uh, offering and as, as, a, as a thanksgiving to God. Okay, so that's the end of the service. And let's bless one another. Okay, so look around your family members and let's bless one another. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us throughout this week and forever. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Okay. Now, so shall we say in five minutes there will be Zoom Bible class for the youth. Okay, so there was a bit of delay, but let's say in five minutes there will be youth Zoom Bible class. Thank you.